This is amazing. Now we have Fi Data. It is a toolkit for building AI assistants using function calling. Function calling enables LLMs to integrate with your own application. As a user, user sends the task to assistant, that is the large language model, then it calls for the function if required and runs the function, give the final result back to the assistant. The information also can be stored. For example, if it's a data assistant, if the user asks a question from a database, the function calling will run show tables, then describe the tables, that means it understands about the table, then run a query to achieve the result. Finally, it summarized the result. We are going to see seven different features. And the seventh one is where we integrate Phi data with Olamo. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about Phi data. In this, I'm going to take you through step by step on how to create assistance, how to add tools, how to add knowledge and storage. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Make sure you click the like button so that this video can be helpful for many others like you. First, conda create hyphen and phi data, python equals 3.11 and then click enter. Next, conda activate phi data and then click enter. Next, pip install phi data and all these packages. I will put the commands in the description below so you can directly install this and then click enter. Once that is done, Export your OpenAI API key like this and then click enter. Next, Olama pull Mistral and Olama pull Orca2. Now let's create a file called app.py and then let's open it. The first feature which we are going to see is creating assistant using Phi data. From phi.assistant, import assistant. Next, assistant equals assistant and the description. You help people with their health fitness goals. Next, assistant.print response and share a quick healthy breakfast recipe and the markdown equals true that's it just literally three lines of code you created an assistant and you're asking a question now i'm going to run this code in your terminal python app.py and then click enter and you can see it's working and it's automatically generating i like the way getting displayed on the screen it's in markdown format and finally here is the full response with a list of ingredients the instructions on how to do it and the various steps. This is nice. Now we are going to add a few more features. Second, we are going to add function calling using DuckDuckGo search tool. So using DuckDuckGo, we are going to search the latest AI news. So from Phi tools, we are importing DuckDuckGo, then creating assistant with the tool DuckDuckGo and show tool calls is true. It's for debugging. Next, assistant dot print response what's the latest ai news summarize top stories with sources that's it again just three lines of code I'm going to comment this out and then i'm going to run this python app.py and click enter now it's going to use the duckduckgo search tool and you can see it's going through five top results and then based on that the large language model is summarizing the top news articles ai chip race grok how AI takes democratized innovation to the next level and gives few more. Now let's add the third feature, creating a custom function and integrate that with function calling. So ultimately, Phi data is good at function calling. So we are going to create a function called stock price. Even this could be your own application. You'll be able to integrate your own application with Phi data using function calling. So first we are importing Y Finance, next importing toolkits, Next, we are creating a class called stock price tool. And here we are defining the stock price function, which returns the stock price of the company. That's it. We are giving these information for the large language model to understand what this function does. So it takes a stock ticker symbol and returns a message containing the stock price. So how we can add this to the assistant? Here is the assistant and you are providing the tools stock price tool dot stock price. That is the function name here. Finally, assistant.printResponse, what's the stock price of Apple? Now I'm going to run this code, python app.py, and you can see it's calling the function with the function name stock price, and the ticker symbol is AAPL. And here it's running the function. Finally, we get the current stock price of Apple is $182. Now let's add DuckDB Assistant for querying movie database. That's the fourth feature. So DuckDB is a fast in-process analytical database. So generally used for data analysis. 
So we are importing JSON, then DuckDB. Then we are creating a DuckDB assistant, DuckDB, and providing a semantic model with name movies and the path to the movies database. It's a CSV file. So the CSV file looks like this with title, genre, description, and other information. Now we are going to analyze this. So now DuckDB assistant, print response, show me top five movies. That's it. I like the simple approach in regards to this tool, which involves only few lines of code and you are able to perform a task. So now I'm going to run this code. There's one mistake I did. So the function name is DuckDB assistant. So updating that and then I'm going to run again. It's working. So to understand first step, it's showing the list of tables. It's understanding the table by describe the database. Finally, it's executing the SQL query. So this is exactly what's going behind the scenes. So first the user asks the question, then the function calling, it understands what is in the CSV file or the database, then run the SQL query to understand that. And finally, it summarizes the result. And finally, here is the answer. The top movies based on the rating. And here's the list. And it gives the SQL query, which it ran to understand this data. As simple as that. Now we go to the fifth feature, Python Assistant. This can create Python program, run the program, execute it, and get the results. So from file assistant Python, import Python Assistant. Next, import CSV file. Now Python Assistant equals Python Assistant. And providing the list of files, that is the same movie data.csv. And we are asking it to install any pip package if required. Now Python Assistant, print response, what is the average rating of movies? Markdown equals true. That's it. Now going to run this code. And here it's running. It's going to go through step by step, getting the CSV data. The function calling is happening here. Next, it's creating the Python file, which I can see here. It got saved here, so I can't even open it. So here is the file which got saved. And it's going to run this code and return the result. Run the code, return the result, and here is the answer. The average rating of movies is approximately 6.72. That's it. Next, we are going to implement this with storage. So first, the data gets stored in the database as embeddings. Then the large language model is going to use that data when processing the result. For that, we are going to use Postgres vector database. So there are different ways to install Postgres in your computer based on the operating system you are using. I'm using Mac, so I'm going to use brew install Postgres SQL and then click enter. Next, brew services start PostgreSQL. This will automatically start the service. You can type brew services list to find the list of services which are running. So I can see the Postgres is running. Next, brew install PG vector. Now we are going to log into the Postgres database, PSQL Postgres. They're creating a database called AI. I've already created that, so it says it already exists. Now create a role called AI with the password AI. So you might need to configure this based on your requirement. Just for testing purpose, I'm doing this. Next, alter role AI, create DB. And next, we are granting privileges to the AI database. Now we are going to the AI database and add the PG vector extension. So as a quick summary, we created the database called AI. We created a role and we altered the role. Next, we granted the permission to that AI database. Finally, we enabled the PG vector extension. I will put all the information in the description below. To quit, you need to type backslash Q and then click enter. This will exit the Postgres database. Now we have completed setting up the Postgres storage. Next, we are going to set this up. So now we are going to import PG vector, PG vector two and Wikipedia knowledge base. So vector DB, PG vector DB and providing the user, which we created just now, the password and the database name. Next, defining the knowledge base which is Wikipedia knowledge base. There we are mentioning the topics that need to be covered. That is Manchester United and Real Madrid. Here we are defining the PG vector database and the collection name. And we are defining the connection from this application to Postgres. Now we are going to create the assistant and providing the knowledge base. Next assistant dot knowledge base dot load recreate equals false. And finally, Assistant.print response asked me about something from knowledge base. So literally, we create the database connection, then define the knowledge base, which converts the Wikipedia data into embeddings. Finally, we are going to ask question to the large language model. 
with the Wikipedia knowledge base as the context. Now I'm going to run this code, Python app.py. It's loading knowledge base. It says added zero documents. That's because I've already run this before. So it's not duplicating itself. Then here is the question it's going to ask. That is Manchester United's history. So it understood the context and asking this question. Now we are towards the end, the seventh step, that is Olama integration. So we are importing Olama, next giving a prompt, who are you, who created you, answer in one sentence. Next temperature and the model names, Mitchell and Orkatu. Now we are going to loop through these models and ask the assistant this question, who are you and who created you? That's it. Now we have integrated Olama in PyData. Now going to run this code in your terminal Python app.py and now you can see it's first running the Mistral model and here is the response. Now it's running the Arca2 model and here is the response. That's it. We have completed seven different steps. But additionally, I want to show you that you can create task and assign that to the large language model, such as generate a theme for the story, write two sentence story for the given theme, give this story a two word name and assign these tasks to the assistant. It's same like AI agents. Now I'm going to run this code. Now it's asking for the theme. I'm going to mention Romcom. And it's automatically generating the name and a short story. Similarly, we have different tools. We saw only DuckDuckGo tool, but we have Python tools, file tool, shell tools, archive tools, Wikipedia tools. And these all tools can be integrated just by calling that function like this. As simple as that. This will take your application to the next level with just few lines of code. Similarly, in regards to knowledge base, we have archive knowledge base, we have docs knowledge base, JSON knowledge base, PDF knowledge base, PDF URL knowledge base, website knowledge base, and the final Wikipedia knowledge base. We saw only Wikipedia, but you are able to extract data from website URL, from PDF URL, from PDF folder, from JSON folder, docs folder, and even from archive website. I'm really excited about this. This can enhance your application with just a few lines of code. I'm going to create more videos similar to this. So stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.